Okay, we have written an interesting integral. We've got the integral from one to infinity, one over the floor function of x minus one over x dx. And some people might already recognize this problem and know the answer. It's gonna rely on a formula towards the end. I don't wanna show it right now, but if I show you the formula, I think it's gonna give away the answer. So to get started with it, the first thing I noticed, we've got a minus sign on the integral, so we definitely could break this up into two integrals. The trouble with that though, just looking at this one, if we split this off in a separate, into a separate integral, this over here is gonna be natural log absolute value x evaluated from one to infinity. But when you evaluate this, the trouble with it is this is gonna diverge. And it turns out this other one would diverge too. So we've got, if we break it up, we've got two divergent integrals. So I'm just gonna leave them together and try to work it that way. Now, because we have the floor function in it, what I'm gonna to wanna to do is break this up if I can break the bounds up on integer values, it's gonna allow us to simplify this first part to just a constant. So for example, just starting at our lower bound, like starting, we'll just create one integral going from one to two. Now when you do this, so all of our x values are between one and two, the floor function is gonna round us down to the next highest integer. So an x value in this range might be something, let's say 1.4, but the floor is gonna just round this down to one. The same thing with any other value you can think of, even 1.99, the floor function is going to round it down to 1. So by setting the bounds this way, the floor function, this is always going to be a 1, and so we can just write it in like this, and this one integral becomes basically 1 over, basically 1 minus 1 over x dx. And then doing another one, we're going to be integrating from 2 to 3. Then in this range, everything's going to get rounded down to this value too, so this is going to become one over two minus one over x. And this is just gonna go, we have to just keep going on and on like this all the way to our upper bound of infinity on it. So now just notice that in every case, this value here is gonna match our lower bound, three, three, one, one. And so it's hard, to, and so it's kind of hard to deal with an infinite number of integrals. So let's just try to generalize any one of these integrals. So what we have is it's gonna be something going from n to n plus one, where n is going to be an integer, so that we're only differing by one here. And then in every case, like we have here, here, and here, this is just going to be one over n minus one over x dx. And the way to have this represent our whole integral, let's just write this as a sum, where n is going to be going from one all the way to infinity. But now here, this piece is just a constant, so we know how to do this. This is going to be a pretty easy integral just to evaluate. So doing this, we have this whole thing under the summation. With one over n being a constant, this is gonna become like one over n times x. This one, when you integrate that, it's just gonna be natural log absolute value. But notice we're starting at one, so everything's positive. So I'm just gonna drop absolute value and this becomes natural log of x, all evaluated from n plus one, sorry, from n to n plus one. Then let's just evaluate plugging in terms. So n plus one first piece here is gonna be n plus one over n minus natural log n plus one. Then for the second part, minus, plug in n in here, this is gonna become n over n, or just one. On this one right here, minus times minus is plus, so we get plus natural log of n. Now for this n plus one over n, let me just write it a little different, dividing in the n. So doing that, what we get is I can write this as one plus one over n here. That way the ones are gonna cancel and give us a zero. And then let's just clean it up. We've got our sum from one to infinity. We have one over n. Log properties, let's combine these two and I can write it as natural log n over n plus one. But what we're left with is still kind of tricky. Now looking at it kind of separately, this here is our harmonic series if we ignore this part, but this thing diverges. And it turns out that this part diverges as well. Not too surprising with what we started with, two divergent pieces. So we still need to find a way to put these together in a way to something that's going to converge. So now to try to finish this off, let's first focus on this piece right here. And I'll kind of put it back the way we had it for a second, where we have, now we can write this as natural log of n minus natural log n plus 1. And then let's just kind of plug in some terms in here starting at 1. So what this is going to look like, natural log of 1 minus natural log of 2. And then when n is two, you're gonna have plus natural log of two minus natural log of three plus natural log of three minus natural log of four. 
But then writing it out like this, we can see that this is actually telescoping because we get all kinds of cancellation of basically every term here all the way to the end. Even here at the end, natural log n, these last two terms are going to cancel and we're just left with this. Technically, we still have this, but natural log of 1, this is just 0. Again, this thing diverges because at this point, if you look at it like ln at infinity, that's going to be going off to infinity. But we can actually express this piece here a different way. We can write this as a limit. We'll write it as the limit as k approaches infinity of minus, because we get the minus sign in front of it, natural log of k. So what I can do with this whole thing is put it in terms of a limit. Let's write this as the limit as k is going to infinity. And then I just need to rearrange this sum a little bit so I can write this as the sum from n equals 1 to this infinite k value of just 1 over n. And then we need to bring this part into it, minus ln k. And so now we're able to express our solution in terms of a limit. Not too satisfying, but still we've got two like divergent pieces here. But the only nice thing about it is this here, this formula for all this stuff, this is actually the same thing as the Euler-Mascheroni constant. This is actually the definition for the Euler-Mascheroni constant. This right here has a value approximately 0.577 something. And so for my final solution for this, we just get the Euler-Mascheroni constant. And so like I said in the beginning, if you've seen this before, you probably already knew the answer, but at least it wasn't something like 0 or 2024 or pi over 4. So. So there you have it. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.